Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am super excited about today's video because it is a collaboration with the one and only Danielita AF, the crafty mixologist. I will tell you more about her channel later in the video. So project number one is going to be an olive wreath. I was inspired by Kirkland's website and I want to recreate this wreath and I knew that I could do that on a fraction of the cost. Now I headed over to my local Dollar Tree where I found a ring and I went to Walmart and picked up some olive branches. The inspiration that I saw was a single wire ring. So I knew that I would have to cut the outer ring off. Now, if you choose to cre recreate this um, project as well, be mindful that there are some sharp parts that are left behind that may cut you. I knew that I probably would use this ring later for another project, so I didn't want a permanent hold. But I went in with the olive branches and I kind of bent them just a little bit to give me more support when attaching them to the ring, if that makes sense. I put a tiny bit of um, hot glue at the end where I had the point and I used some jute string and I wrapped it around. I did that for each um, set of branches. I was really impressed with the way this came out and in my inspiration they had like a um, le leather, I cannot talk, they had like a leather strap over the top to hang it. I could not find any leather at my Dollar Tree so I'm still on the hunt for that. Next what I did was I took the branches and wrapped them around on the form and this is how it turned out. I paired it with an old window that my mother-in-law had given to me and I thought it was so so cute and a great addition to the kitchen. Like I said, this video is a collaboration with Danielita AF, the crafty mixologist. She's a lover of the arts and people, and once she reaches monetization, she wants to donate 50% of her earnings to Moving Arts Espanola. It's an organization for low-income kids and families. So guys, go and show her channel some love. Tell her that I sent you. I know that you will not be disappointed. For your convenience, I have linked her channel in the description box below. I've seen a lot of botanical prints um, recently and I want to recreate them. So I headed back over to my local Dollar Tree, picked up three 8x10 frames, took them apart and gave them a makeover. Using some Waverly chalk paint and the color moss, I painted all three of my picture frames. Now you guys know that I'm not a heavy distressor, but I did do a little distressing with a Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Guys, this plaster paint has become my new favorite color, and I just love the way it looks with the distressing as well as just as a base paint. So again, I'm not a light distressor, nothing against anyone who loves a heavy farmhouse look. Um, it's just not my style and I do like a teeny bit of it. So what I did was I tapped my brush in the paint, tapped it, um, no, I dipped my pa paintbrush in the paint, tapped it on the paper towel and this is how it came out. I love how it accentuated those raised pieces on this picture frame. Then I headed over to, I headed, then I went to the um, frame backing. I knew that I wanted to make it be a glass see-through kind of effect. So what I did was I painted the backing of the frame in the color plaster. Um, I gave this about one, no, two good coats of chalk paint. I let it dry. Key to this, guys, if you choose to do this, let it dry flat because once I started putting that chalk paint on it, it did start to curl up a little bit. So I laid it flat as possible and I let it dry thoroughly. Once it was dry, I noticed that you could see where the backing of the stand was attached. So I also did not cut paint the stand because I was very unsure if I was going to stand them or not. Now, I had to go in and I had to strategically place 
the leaves over the places where the stand attachments were shown. I hope that makes sense. You'll see here. Um, going in with some um, hot glue, being very careful to not burn myself, I covered those pieces very um, carefully. I thought I was just applying these down randomly, but apparently I wasn't. Um, my eyes took towards the um, shape of the leaf, and so here it is. I reattached the um, backing to the frame. Um, so and I just love the way it looks. I made three of these. I did a traditional fern leaf and an onion grass. I do not know what happened to that footage. However, this is what they look like. I didn't like the onion grass as much, so you guys will have to tell me. Did not make the shelf tryouts, but this is what they look like on my shelf. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Lon. Thank you so much for coming over to my channel. Here I create affordable DIYs and I love doing them on a budget. If you're just stopping by and you like what you see, I hope that you would consider subscribing to my channel. For all of those who have already been living life with Lon, don't forget to like this video because it helps my channel and hit your post notification bell so you don't miss an upload from me. So you guys know that I'm a sucker for a good wall decal or a sticker. I found this um, sticker at my Dollar Tree and I went in with Love Signs from Valentine's Day. I had previously distressed it but I liked the way it looked so I didn't use it. Use it. So I went in with some um, chalk, Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I went in um, with some painter's tape because sometimes I can get things a little bit crooked and I wanted to make sure that this sticker would stay in place during application. And as I started to make this sign, I thought of my mother-in-law who loves to bake and who loves farmhouse decor. So I said that I would make this piece for her So as I started to pull back the backing, I started a small piece because I didn't want to take the entire thing off because I wanted to have control of applying the sticker to the board. It went on the board really evenly, it was very smooth, and I was pleased with the outcome. To create the farmhouse look, I went in with some Waverly chalk paint and the color mineral to distress the edges. Here you can see, I was super afraid to put so too much distressing on it and I finally said, you know what, just go for it. It's not gonna go in your house. Distress to your heart's desire. So I did, and again, I think it was super cute. I um, went in with some jute twine to finish it off. And here you can see that I really went in on this piece. Look at the paint on my hands, guys. <laughs> Crafting can be a little messy, okay? Give me a little grace. <laughs> so this is a super easy technique. You just take some um, rope, twine, whatever you want, wrap it around your hands a couple of times, tie a knot in the middle, and you have a really simple bow. I hot glued it onto the board and I made a little jute twine hanger and this is what it turned out to be. Guys, she absolutely loved it and I loved being able to make this for her. Guys, when you are a crafter, sometimes you get an endless amount of DIYs. So giving my crafts away, to me, it gives me joy because I am blessing someone else with my talent and my gift. And you can't save everything. I mean, your house would become a just a, a museum of crafted items. Okay, guys, if you stuck with me to the end, thank you so much if you are still here. And this is our final DIY. I headed over to the Dollar Tree. I grabbed one of those little trinket boxes and some silver metallic paint because I wanted to make a recipe box to go with the cute little sign that I just made my mother-in-law. 
and to spare you of the boredom of me painting I'm gonna speed this thing up And because this recipe box is going to be an oldie but a goodie, I'm going in with, in with some brown paint and distressing it to make it look a little rusted and worn. Guys, I love the way this turned out. I grabbed a piece of white lined paper and I did brown wash on it and created a fake recipe titled Grandma's Carrot Cake. I thought it was super cute. What do you guys think? So guys, that is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who's stopping over from Danielita's channel. And thank you, Danielita, for the collaboration. Connect with me on Instagram. I can be found at living life with lawn underscore. There are often times that I will post on that channel versus posting on YouTube. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, if you're not living life with lawn, then you're missing out. Bye.